evening, Valerie and Sally and Bettina. I am just absolutely delighted to be here this evening uh, to chat with you about this superb Playing with Sharks film. Uh, and thank you to the Environmental Film Festival in the nation's capital for asking me to host. Uh, you know, your award-winning presentations of hundreds of wonderful environmental films and your support of filmmakers and environmental conversations through the years have been really vitally important, not only to the whole Washington district area, but also um, as it extends out across the United States and the world. So uh, it's exciting to be here and to be part of this. And also I'm, I'm so thrilled that the National Geographic um, is promoting and distributing this exciting, fabulous film. So there, there's just a huge amount to explore in Val's life and questions to ask Sally and Patina about writing and direct, directing and producing this film. But I'm just gonna start with Val. Because Val, when I look at you, I just think of these absolutely fabulous, exciting, wonderful dive trips and a whole lifetime of friendship. It makes me feel oh, very sort of weepy, you know? We've, we've really been lucky to lead wonderful and exciting and adventuresome lives. So when I first met you, I was a neophyte learning to dive. It was just as Peter was, um, had written Jaws all those many years ago, but I was greatly inspired by, you know, your guts and your curiosity and your ability to excel and be respected um, in the early days of spearfishing and scuba diving. And as we know, it was a man's world, but you topped them, Val, you definitely topped them. So that was just the beginning. And you went on to become a pioneer, uh, really one of the first to not approach sharks as vicious monsters, but to understand that they were fascinating, highly evolved marine animals that needed to be studied and understood and respected. So bravo to you for that. And I've seen you underwater and you have an approach with all marine animals that just opens them up to you and they come to you and you have these incredible personal experiences. So before we talk about that, I just wanna say that most people also don't know that you are a, a superb artist and writer and storyteller. And I have behind me the <laughs> painting of the great white shark that you did for me. Oh. Do you see it after Peter died? Yes. Yeah, it, I have it always there and it just fills my heart with, with joy and, and you know respect for these fabulous animals. So I, I, I think that, um, that your absolutely beautiful, creative, gentle side comes out in your paintings and the, the books that you write. And so I would love to hear a little bit more about your personal and up close encounters with marine animals, be they sharks or groupers or eels or tiny little creatures. Just give us, a, give us some more of your personal, beautiful experiences. Well, thank you for that praise. I'm a bit sort of stunned, you're so flattered. <laughs> um, the, I have learned very early in my diving career that animals above water and animals underwater are very similar. There seems to be, if you have a big bad tiger, you have a big bad shark or something in the water. It's, they're all animals and they all have a place on the planet. And there is a web of life that unfortunately we humans are wrecking by overfishing. 
But in my time, I've had one friendly pet large shark who I could ride around and not a wild shark. It was a tawny shark. And I met that particular guy when we were working for the American Navy on shark repellers. And I had to take the shark away, drag a piece of fish under its nose, because the Navy only wanted to work with potentially dangerous sharks. Certainly not a very large, but pretty harmless shark. As long as you didn't up there, he wasn't going to bite. He didn't have much in the way of teeth, but he had very good crushing plates. And uh, in one day, I got to know him. In two days, I was riding him around. Yeah. They burn very fast. You can't teach a horse that quickly, I don't think. And uh, then there's, it was my eels. I have three to this day, I think, friendly, very dear, sweet eels. One oh, is what a kind of eels? One is a honeycomb eel, and two are green, no. what they call on the barrier reef, green no. eels. They're all big. They're all large. But any marine animal, if you want to approach it, be slow and gentle. And when you touch it, as Ron would say, touch it like a shadow. Yeah. Don't we all like being stroked? Yeah, 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 we do. And no, different. And no different to stroking a cat. It's just an interesting aspect that nobody else I know of has ever taken into account. Is that they, but you know, like a dog. Hello, little doggy, and you pat him, and he's happy. Hello, little sharky. <laughs> Hello, bitch. <Richard>. Yes. <laughs> but also, the more eels, they're, oh. they're not just a, they're not a one-off relationship. No. You, how many years? Uh, well, I met Harry and Fang in 1970. And we've been friends ever since. Yeah. And um, I met Honey the, Honey the Eel halfway through the 70s, 1970s. And last time I went to Banda in the Banda Sea, she was still there. Oh, how wonderful. There's the story. I can't believe it. And nobody's killed her. <laughs> well, That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, the King of Banda said nobody was allowed to harm that eel. He was a diver, he came down and met her. Uh -huh. But I thought she'd be gone. It's wonderful yeah. that so long lived that you can mm. have that relationship. Yeah. yeah it's true, you know, yeah. because in my opinion, all those eels were adults. Mm. So they obviously live a long time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's and that's what, what about groupers? Have, have you found friendly groupers? Only uh, when I've offered them food. Uh -huh. Except on my last dive in, Pap in Papua New Guinea, Mumbai, I met a groper who didn't seem to mind me at all. My girlfriend took a photo where I've got my hand on his back. But I think it was a tame groper. It was used to oh. diving. Oh, oh, uh-huh. Well, that beautiful story about the octopus that was making its oh, runway. Building. Yeah. Yes. And you, you oh, yes. Wonderful film. Gosh. Val, you should do another film. I think you should just do a film just about encounters with, with you know, your gentle encounters with these marine animals, because that's so much of what we try to do in ocean conservation is, is bring these animals to life for people. Um, mm -hmm you know, they, they have a much easier time respecting a, a lion um, than they do respecting a shark or, or you know, being awed by an elephant than, than by marine animals. So I think there's another film in your future right now. We have yeah. to get out on the ocean and do it. And uh, I, I want to come along, please. <laughs> uh, well, the film, I hope, presents sharks in a very different light. Yes. Nobody who was interviewed put them down. Mm. They all, including yourself, all seem to feel like I did, that they were much maligned. They were an important part of the ocean and 
but right now they should all be protected because they've been depleted in numbers so much, like millions and millions of sharks every year, just for their fins. For their fins, it's just tragic. And and as you know, you know, Peter was so distressed that Jaws um, caused people to be <laughs> even more frightened of sharks. And um, with your help and the help of so many other marine conservationists around the world and uh, we all are, are working hard to have more and more marine protected areas and try try to save enough of the ocean to keep it going. So Bettina and Sally, oh, so many questions to ask you, but, but truly to grapple with all of the film and the diaries and the interviews of this packed life of Val and Ron, and then put it together into this spectacular film. Okay, just tell us how you did it. I, I had a sneak peek 21 years ago when we made, made The Shadow of the Shark together with, with yeah. Ron. Yeah. And you know that footage going through all of it then was, it was extraordinary then. But I think also with the passage of time, we were talking mm. about the whole shifting of the Anthropocene, you know, that mm -hmm. idea that the film allowed us to show what once was, what Ron and Valerie had witnessed and captured, yeah. you yeah. know, so we're able to show this whole trajectory of, or actually this way, of what's happening to our oceans. Mm -hmm. um, and also being able to scan the film, it gave us a, a renewed appreciation of Ron's camera work, mm -hmm. just how good he was under you know, back in a day when you'd had to change the 400 foot reel and come to the surface, you know, yeah, Ron yeah. his breath, you know, every shot was a winner shot. There were no outtakes to speak of. Ron was editing in the camera. He did. You know, it yeah. was this incredible frugality and getting it right. Like Ron wasn't doing a second take. He mm. seemed to, when we looked at the rushes of the footage, everyone was a first take. And Valerie seemed to just swim through at the right oh, time. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> language underwater I think it was this I'm rolling <laughs> anyway, <laughs> to appreciate that all over again and then Sally you know just took it and crafted it and, and wove it and you know <laughs> it, it was a, a and, and just capturing the essence of Valerie which was very important what you remarked on at the beginning of the interview you know that what Valerie did when she did it mm -hmm. was very important to have a director that could understand that and feel it in your heart what yes. the challenges faced by women now but faced by women then and the achievements made even more remarkable because of that so you know so there was that issue with a woman at the at the time there was the issue of our, our changing oceans to capture there was the issues of sharks which which are tantalizing and terrifying for people but mm -hmm. we knew that showing Valerie's closeness to shark and deep understanding of individuals was really important to shine through. Yes. And I think at the end, you know, to have a film that was inspirational and aspirational, you know, for hope, because you mm. don't want to denude people's hope. So Sally managed to just do that. Yes. Just like that. Just that. Just like that. I think that... Um, Look, one of the things, it's so lovely to be able to have these conversations because there's so much to say about Valerie's life and the process of making this film with this extraordinary archive. And one of the things that was probably quite challenging, as you pointed out, was the, the volume. You know, there was such a huge volume of um, footage but one of the things that really struck me, well, two, two things that really struck me quite early on. The first was all of the footage um, had always been filmed for particular purpose, you know, to be used in great documentary films and, and um, stories that, that Ron and Valerie produced over the decades but that the footage wasn't shot for the purpose that we were using it. So there was a difference in terms of looking at that imagery and thinking about how to tell this more personal story, the story of a witness to the change in the ocean and her own relationship with, um, with, with the marine world and in particular, uh, these, um, these, these extraordinary sharks of all different species. But the other thing was I just loved, I loved, loved 
the opportunity to see Valerie in the footage then yeah. and to put that against Valerie today. <laughs> and it's I've, I've spoken about this before, but it's absolutely true. I find such poignancy in the image of a young woman on the cusp of everything, not knowing what she's going to go on and become and be and so mm -hmm. on, with this extraordinarily beautiful, older, wiser character. And to be able to do that in a film and to see those two people who are the same person uh, was, it was, a, was something I, I was excited by as a filmmaker and uh, something that our beautiful editor, Adrian Rostriola and I worked oh, with. Uh, a to superb editor, my uh, glory. Uh, really, yes. really superb. Yes. So Val, just quickly, we don't have too much time. Um, could, you, could you just tell a little bit more about your conservation battles? Um, because you have been such a powerful leader that way. And I know it's just uh, been exasperating um, so much of the time, but with the Great Barrier Reef or the potato cod, or, you know, they talked in the movie about, oh, they talked in the movie about the Ron and Valerie Marine Park. Very good justice to have it right there where Jaws was filmed and to have sharks protected there now, which is just wonderful. But what about some of your other you know, battles on the conservation front? I first learned that one person could make a difference. Yeah. In 1970, I was working on a series called Barrier Reef, and I read how the reefs around Australia were being wiped out of big fish by scuba men. They were doing it commercially. Uh, going down on scuba and shooting fish. A reef fish has nowhere to go except his home, which is the reef. And I thought, this is wrong. So I started writing letters to the government with facts, telling them that if they didn't stop them spearing fish using self-contained breathing apparatus, they would wipe out the reef fish that the, the little fishermen, it's good to go to the fishermen, Mm -hmm. uh, catch. And somehow or rather, I got it banned in every state in Australia except Western Australia that you couldn't take fish using breathing apparatus. Mm -hmm. And that, well, that was the first step. And then I realized I can do this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I went from there. I, there was a potato card, Epinephalus. De Kula, he's not a card, he's a groper. I learned about him on uh, Europe, the island of Europa. I was in the, the Zodiac with Stan Waterman. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And they, we met these fish, many, many, many. And they were very friendly. And coming back, Stan said, all that fish and no potatoes. And I said, Stan, they're wearing the potatoes. You know, they're saying all that meat and no potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how the name came. Anyway, didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and uh, That's then, we, then I just went on from there. We, might, we were making a documentary called The Grey Nurse Shark. We changed it to The Vanishing Grey Nurse Shark. Mm -hmm. That's when I took on the, the, uh, the protection of Grey Nurse Shark. Mm -hmm. And I just went on. It was Sometimes it might have just been an area, but I learned how to do it. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, obvious. You get a good story, you get good imagery, and you go to television. Yeah. They'll always, they'll always take it, and they yeah. tell you a story. And once your story's out there, the radio stations want to interview you, and you're talking to the people of Australia, and you're telling them that wouldn't you like your children to be able to see a fish like this? Mm. If they're not protected, they never will. And yeah. yeah. I've had amazing success with many different marine animals and areas with getting the protected. And it's always been doing it exactly that way. I think the hardest one was the, the uh, potato cod because I had to get its area protected because they live in big family groups. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they don't move around. The uh, fishermen, when I had it done, told me they were going to go and kill them all. Well, they just about have now. Last time I was there, there were only three, and there were 32 when we first found oh. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now, it's so uncommon at that time. They were only in the Japanese fish book and they were titled very rare. Mm. Only three specimens known. Uh -huh. And they are very rare. Mm. But I worked away at that one, took eight months. Wow. But you did do it. I did do it. You did not. I, well, it was the people of Australia who did it writing to the government, writing to national parks. National parks had no interest. The Great Barrier Reef and Reef Authority were not interested. Yes. Nobody was interested except that the little resort on Lizard Island, which was not even built then, just being mm -hmm. put in place, they thought it might be a good thing because it's adjacent to Lizard Island. Yeah, yeah. Was that awarded the Order of the Royal Ark, though, for that? Yes, the, the I did. Yeah, of, yeah. You know, which is amazing that it was recognised internationally. Yeah. Um, yes. For the importance that it yeah. was. Passion and facts. Passion yeah. and facts and Valerie. <laughs> and seems guess, to be the formula. <laughs> that's right. And you know, the opposition will always attack and they always lie, Wendy. Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't worry about saying in television, but you're lying. That's not true. I'm happy to take that. Them out. Yeah. yeah. I, I loved seeing all the old clips of you on television shows, you know, all over the United States, all over the world. It was just fabulous because you you do, you have this absolutely direct, very um, if I may say it's graceful as well as direct. Mm -hmm. And um, and it is, it is. And you smile and you don't harangue, you just let the facts and let your presence carry the day. So I I have a feeling that we've done our 20 minutes. I could go on for hours and hours with you three fabulous dames, I'm going to say, because <laughs> I love my dames. So anyway, um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I, I can't wait to see all of you on the ocean sometime very soon. And Valerie, when you come to the States, here we are on the East Coast, Stan and Susie and I. Stan and, and Susie. Really thank you so much for being a part of the film. Like if your yes. contribution, oh. honestly. You were and, lovely. And wrangling people, you know, for Sundance and everything. We really appreciate it. Yes. Oh, I was just absolutely honored and thrilled to be part of the film. And I hope there's another one, Val. And I hope you do a worldwide tour in person, that's what we need. Oh, yeah. Wendy, darling, I'm so old. I'm ah, so I'll, be quick. <laughs> I'll go with you, Val, but it should be yeah. in the ocean. What we need is just an ocean vessel to go around the world. That's yeah. it. Yeah. A yeah. Touring, okay. touring vessel with films, with yeah. Q A's. Wouldn't that be fabulous? And a few dives. Oh, it'd be fabulous, just fabulous. So thank you, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Environmental Film Festival. It's been great. Thank you.